Good evening, Father's Heart Digital Church. Good evening, facilitators. Welcome to this um, recording. And yes, on on Thursday, the 13th of July, something's gone wrong with Zoom, so they asked me to re-record the facilitators training um, for the app as well as for YouTube. So if you were live on the call and you now watch it afterwards again and it looks different, because it is different, this is a fresh recording, but uh, welcome everybody. And um, tonight we we continue our teaching with the facilitators, and we continue our teaching, change the spiritual atmosphere. And we had six different um, sessions on changing the spiritual atmosphere. Tonight is lesson 68, and it's change the spiritual atmosphere number six. It is number six of six. So this is it. Next week I will start with something new. But we've talked about changing the spiritual atmosphere for the past six sessions now, or past five, and this is now the sixth session. And um, before we start with that, let's just press in with the Lord. Lord, we just come and we commit this time. We commit our hearts, our spirit man, to you, Lord. Help us through our help of the Holy Spirit to really accept and receive this word, every one of us, exactly where we are in our journey, so that this word will build us up and edify us and build us up in our most holy faith, all to the glory of God. Lord, Lord, no man, only you. The focus is you. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's uh, let's start this uh, properly and say that um, it is Lesson 68, Change the Spiritual Atmosphere, Session 6 of 6. And um, we, start with, we, we started with, in the beginning, saying that we will cover six areas the first area will be pray or praying, will be will be prayer, um, pray or prayer. The first to change the spiritual atmosphere. I have to pray. I have to live a godly life. I have to share the gospel, and I have to serve others. I have to engage in spiritual warfare, and uh, that was last time. And tonight we will talk about the the next part, and uh, we'll get to that. Connect with other believers just now. But in the first session, and the prayer, or pray, and the prayer, in prayer we can change the spiritual atmosphere. We said pray for salvation, pray for God's love and compassion to be shown, pray for unity. So that's you and I in our areas, in uh, where we live. That's what we do in our home fellowship. That's what we do in the area we live so that we can change the spiritual atmosphere. Pray for unity. Number four, pray against spiritual strongholds. Five, pray for God's peace and, and comfort in your area, change the spiritual atmosphere to for the whole area to experience God's peace and comfort. And number six, pray for God's guidance and wisdom. Then the number two was uh, live a godly life, uh, love God and love others, serve others, uh, live by the fruits of the, the fruit of the spirit. So we have to allow the fruit of the spirit to manifest, for the spirit to bear fruit through us in our communities. Be honest and trustworthy. Be humble. Forgive others. Then we talked about share the gospel. Be prepared to share. Be prepared to share the gospel anytime, anywhere, any place. Be prepared to share. And um, it's important that you and I grab our manual and go and share the gospel with other people. Use your testimony and allow your testimony to speak about God's goodness and, and God's um, provision and grace. And speak the truth in love. And that's, as we said in that session, not always the easiest because sometimes people experience it as not out of love. But speak the truth in love. Pray for opportunities. Pray for opportunities to make a difference in your community. And use creative, me use creative methods to share the gospel in your community, in your home fellowship, through into your, into your community. And then we, we talked about serve others. Love your neighbor. Feed the hungry. Uh, visit the sick, help the poor, and encourage others. So that was under serve others. And for you and I to to make a change in the spiritual atmosphere of our area, serve others, love your neighbor, feed the hungry, visit the sick, help the poor, and encourage others. Then we talked about engaging spiritual warfare, and that was number five, all grace. It just worked out that that is the number five, and number five is all about grace, and that is absolute grace. Praying for protection. And remember we said you not now become a spiritual warrior and uh, you take on strongholds that's got nothing to do with you. This is in the area that you live. This is in the area where you live. This is in the area where you pay rates and taxes. This is in the area where you in the natural have 
um, presence and therefore in the spiritual it carries over and you can go in the spirit and go change in the uh, spiritual atmosphere in that area. So engage in spiritual warfare, praying for protection, praying against demonic strongholds, um, using the name of Jesus, fasting and putting on the armor of God. And that was the, the uh, fifth element that we added to this. And then tonight we will look at the sixth and last element of that and that will be connect with other believers. So tonight we will talk about connect with other believers. You as a facilitator, how can this help me in fighting the, the battle, in fighting the spiritual battle in my community and for helping and assisting with the people in my home fellowship for them to uh, be better at it. Connect with other believers. We start with devotion to teaching and fellowship. We start with devotion to teaching and fellowship. We say, when we talk about uh, uh, connecting with other believers, we talk about devotion to teaching, devotion to teaching, devotion to the teaching that you receive, but devotion to God in the teaching that you go and, and help and spread the word that you spread, the gospel that you spread in your community, and fellowship, to have fellowship with the ordinary guy in the street, to have fellowship with people, and um, to earn the right to be able to share the gospel with them, to have fellowship with them. And we have a scripture that's um, on devotion to teaching and fellowship that we find in, in Acts 2 and Acts 2 verse 42. Um, highlights um, this, the scripture highlights the importance of believers' devotion, uh, devoting themselves to the apostle teachings and to fellowship. And we read the scripture, and it's, and they continued steadfastly in the apost apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of pray, bread and in prayers. And it's important for you and I, in the moment that we have something that's out of tilt in our community, the moment that we have something that's not fine with, every, with a person in the, in the home fellowship, that we immediately um, press in and step in and do the prayer part by engaging in, in study and the discussions of scriptures with other believers. So not just in the home fellowship, but in the community as well, wherever you have the opportunity to get into discussions with, with fellow believers, talking about the, the scriptures and um, a deepening of our understanding of God's word and to build st a strong foundation for our faith, for help other believers to build a strong foundation for their faith with the word and the scriptures that we use and talk about and to be able to freely discuss and talk about the, the Word of God. Fellowship with other believers provides support, encouragement, and accountability. And it's, it's imperative that we hear those three. Fellowship with other believers provides support in supporting other fellow believers and supporting them in the Scripture, in the Word, in the understanding of the Word, talking to them, have them give them the opportunity to be open enough to hear what their thoughts are on the Scriptures. And remember, the word will talk for itself. If all else fails, we grab the scriptures and we read the scriptures and we spend time in the scriptures. So we provide support, we provide encouragement and accountability on our spiritual journey. Fellow believers talking to one another, that is accountability, where we actually discuss how we apply and how we see every, every part of the scripture working and coming out and uh, having effect in our community. Then the the... Next point is attending home fellowship. Attending home fellowship. And I know, know I talk to the converted when I talk here on this platform about attending home fellowship, but I would like to encourage you to encourage more people to attend home fellowship, to encourage more people to, to get to the gathering, to start a home fellowship. People that's not in your area, get them to encourage them to start a home fellowship. In Hebrew 10, verse 24 and uh, 25, we, we read the following. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Let us consider one another to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Not forsaking the assembly. Not forsaking for us coming together. And this is not the church and going to a building. This is to the church going anywhere, the church meeting, you two, three, four, um, uh, fellow uh, fellow members of the church, church, we are the church, meeting anywhere for coffee, uh, helping and assisting one another, um, uh, ourselves together, as is the manner of some, 
but exhorting one, uh, one another, and so much to the more as to see the day approaching. That day of Christ coming to fetch his bride. Remember, Christ is not coming to fetch a bride that is that is still busy preparing. A bride is prepared. So in our regular gatherings, we provide an opportunity for believers to encourage and spur one another on towards love and good deeds, for them to, to have a, a channel to live a life for Christ by sharing experiences, by having an opportunity to share experience, to share where God has come through, to share their testimony, to share a testimony that's pointing to the love of love of Christ, the gospel of, of Jesus Christ, and, and to talk about challenges. Believers can uplift one another and build a sense of community. So just being in the place where people can come and come talk freely about their challenges and then find the answers in the scriptures of how to, to overcome them. The next point is unity in diversity. Unity in diversity. Now we are very diverse. We are a diverse nation. We are a diverse people. And we have to accept and understand that. And um, I've got two scripture references there for you. And one of them I'm, I'm going to read. So let's start with that. Romans 12 verse 4 to 5. And then we're also going to ask you to look at 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 27. I'm not going to read it now purely because of time, but please also go, to, go read 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 to 27, and um, uh, uh, together with this Romans 12, verse 4 to 5. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we being many are one body in Christ, an individual member of one another. And the key is that we understand that we have a whole body and that every person attending your home fellowship, every person that you have the opportunity to discuss the word with, every person that you have the opportunity to discuss and share your testimony with, for them to share their testimony with you, is another member in the body. And it's in particular in home fellowship, we help and assist people to understand the body, to understand the opportunity for every person to contribute towards to the body of Christ. And um, that's the beautiful part of home fellowship, to, to find the unity in diversity. We are a diverse people group. We're not, we're not everyone the same. Everyone has got a special gift. Everyone has got a different, different insight into the scriptures. But the beautiful part is to get together and to be able to come and share that, to discuss that, and to openly talk about that. And um, if, we, if we look at the 1 Corinthians 12 part connected to the Romans 12, the, the, the key is that it talks about the whole body and all the different um, aspects of the body, the, the limbs, the eye, the ear, the, the mouth. Every one of these are different parts of the body, but we need the connecting of the full body. We need the body to work in unison, otherwise the person will be useless, otherwise the person will not do the normal functions that we expect from a, sorry, a person that's not hampered. Um, and the key is, in the body of Christ, every one of us has got an opportunity, has got a role to play, has got a part to, to, to bring. And connecting with other believers help us to realize that we are part of a larger spiritual body, and that each member has a unique role and function through collaboration and unity. Through collaboration and unity. Remember the word unity in the and unity is in the word of God. Unity is standing steadfast, the truth of the gospel, nothing else. So standing in unity, believers can complement one another's strengths. What strengths do you have that you bring to the home fellowship? What strengths do you pull from every person in the home fellowship? Because that's part of being a facilitator, is to pull the strengths to get the people to gather around and bring their, sp their spiritual strengths, their natural strengths in what they're good at, but bring their spiritual strengths in the things that they're not afraid to pray in. Support each other's weaknesses. Stand in the gap for one another. Support one another. Where, where someone is not um, uh, used to praying out loud for others, don't, don't uh, expose, expose that. Allow them to slowly build up and work in that area on themselves until they are comfortable to come and talk and, and pray before other people. Because for some of us it's easy. For some of some of us has done it before. Others haven't. They knew in the family. 
and allow every person to find their strength. Don't come and judge a person. Don't go tell someone that they're not hearing right and that that um, they not you're not so sure if they are um, born again because of this and that. Allow every person to bring to the table who they are and where they are, strengths as well as weaknesses, so that we can rally around one another, so that we can complement one another, so that we can build each other up in our most holy faith and fulfill the mission. And that mission is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is why we do what we do. That's why we're busy as a home fellowship. We're busy in what we're doing. Then we go to the last one for tonight, and that is spiritual growth and accountability. Spiritual growth and accountability. And that's such an important one. And you and I as a facilitator have a huge role to play in the spiritual growth and the accountability to every member of the home fellowship. And that's not having a book to tick off and to see if everyone's okay, if they're growing spiritually and to keep them accountable to what they have to do. This is by encouraging, helping, and assisting people to see that by connecting with other believers, we will foster and give them an, an, an uh, environment where spiritual growth, where they can have an experience spiritual growth, where they have the opportunity to grow and to be safe, where they can flourish, where they can, can see God operating through them, where they can see the, the love of God manifesting through them and that's the beautiful part of home fellowship and that's thank you i want to come and commendate and, and every one of you that's allowing people to grow allowing people the space to come and learn and how to put into practice the the word of god that we read and how to come and put it into practice into something practical that i can take out to the marketplace and thank you to every facilitator that's allowing people the opportunity to come and learn Remember, accountability within the community helps believers stay on track. We have to have accountability. We have to say, if, we, if we're going to do something and you commit to that, we keep you accountable to do that. Because that is part of, of who we are as human beings. We need someone to take us by the hand to help us to get to the place where we can be accountable. Where we can actually take ownership of that of that area and, and go. And sometimes that area is a, is a heavy spiritual element in home fellowship, in praying for the sick, in visiting um, with the poor, in helping the poor, in setting up meetings for people that just need some care and love, in having spending time with people that just, do, that just need someone to come and talk to them about Jesus Christ, by sharing the gospel, by sharing your testimony. It's important that we help each other and to keep each other accountable and to help us to stay on track and to resist temptation, to be accountable to one another in those areas that you have weaknesses, that you know that this is my weakness, this is the thing that I always find myself to. Apostle Paul talked about the things that he wants to do, he, he doesn't do, and the things that he doesn't want to do, he finds himself doing it. And the key is for us to be as our own fellowship, to be accountable to one another, to resist temptation to be there for one another and to strive for a close relationship with God. Because that is, in the end, that is all that home fellowship is about, is striving into a close relationship with God. And, and we as the church, as church, as home fellowship, as the, the group of people getting together, getting insight into each other's lives, getting the opportunity to, to build into my fellow believers' lives, that is the place where we can spiritually grow, where we can see other people, other people's spiritual growth, and where we can help people and hold them accountable to what they commit, to what they say they will do, and for us to stand together and be there when, when, when the popo eats the fan, to be there for one another, to just in truth and in love and in compassion be there and just be there for one another. In conclusion, tonight I would like to say, by connecting with other believers on our topic with spiritual, with uh, connect with other believers on our uh, landing on this topic, by connecting with other believers, we embody the principles and examples set forth in the scriptures. We create a supportive community and encourage spiritual growth, fosters unity. We need to encourage spiritual growth and foster unity in our communities and extends a helping hand.
by doing that, we extend a helping hand into our community. And that's why we have active duty. That's why we have prayer duty. That's why we walk the block to make a difference in the spiritual atmosphere and helping, giving a helping hand to those in need. Let us actively seek opportunity to connect with other believers and impact our communities for the glory of God. And um, allow me to say thank you to every facilitator that is purely just busy facilitating that, making sure that you help and facilitate the people to get together, to discuss the Word of God, insight into the Word of God, and just be there for one another. And um, if we go back to our six elements that we talked about in Change the Spiritual Atmosphere, the six elements that we talked about in there, and that you are busy excelling in, in, in home fellowship, and allow me to say thank you, is pray, that's how we change the spiritual atmosphere. Live a godly life. I cannot say something and do something different. Share the gospel. Share your testimony. Use your testimony to point towards the love of Christ, God's goodness and His grace. Serve others. Encourage, um, engage in spiritual warfare. Engage in spiritual for warfare because that's how we change the spiritual atmosphere in our community, in every household of those in our home fellowship and those living in the streets amongst them and connect with other believers. And um, that was the six areas that I identified in Change the Spiritual Atmosphere for us as facilitators to go focus on and to go have scripture on. And I trust that you found this to be helpful and um, to be of encouragement to you as facilitator, but also to the people in your own fellowship. And... Um, Allow me to once again say thank you for always be willing to give some of yourself, for always be prepared, for always be willing to come and sacrifice of yourself to build the body of the body, to build the church, to build, to prepare the bride for the coming of Christ. And we know that the time is short, but the harvest is, is big. And thank you for bringing in the harvest. And uh, make sure that you continually allow your your testimony to speak of the goodness of Christ, for people to be encouraged to become followers of Christ. Thank you, facilitators. Thank you to every person of our home fellowship watching this recording. And um, thank you for standing steadfast, pressing into the word, and um, making a difference in your community. That's the way that we're going to see the vision of Dr. Frost for a changed spiritual atmosphere over our nation come to fruition by every one of us just taking our area and making a difference there. Lord, we just come and thank you for the opportunity that we as facilitators can come and make a difference in the lives of our fellow believers. Lord, in the lives of people in our community who are not believers yet, and that we can show them Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ, the love of God, and that we can, through sharing that with them, get them to see that that's what they need. That's who they want to be. That's where they want to where they want to end up with you, time with God and eternity with God, sitting in heavenly places. Lord, I send every facilitator under the sound of my voice, I send them forth to go and be active in your community and be active, actively involved in changing the spiritual atmosphere. Thank you, Lord, that we can come and humble ourselves before you as our provider, as our redeemer. We thank you for that. I bless every person in the sound of my voice to go forth and be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for visiting with us and uh, watching this recording. Have a blessed one. Bye-bye.